Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 546, what to do when your doctor wants you to stop your hormone therapy. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. We're going to talk today about more questions that your primary care doctor brings up to you when you're seeing them for something completely different than hormones. But um, they want to talk about hormones and want to get you off of them. So there are many different questions. Last week, we addressed some of the big ones. This week, I find that many primary care doctors say, your hair is falling out because you're on testosterone. And what do you, how can you respond to that? Because that usually makes women really freaked out. Men, not so much. But, men, but women, if somebody says your hair is falling out because, they're going to stop doing whatever that because is. And um, testosterone, if it is uh, too high a dose and you don't take estrogen... And you genetically make a lot of a byproduct of testosterone called DHT, then yes, testosterone could contribute to hair loss, but the hair loss is specifically in certain places. So hair loss from high DHT is here and here, and that's where you'll see it. You won't see it anywhere else. So if your hair loss is not in those places, then your hair loss is not from testosterone. And Dermatologists should know that. Primary care doctors should know that. I, but they seem to forget that when they're talking to you about some medication like testosterone that they don't quite understand because it's bioidentical. They haven't been. They haven't had it in their journals for some reason, and uh, they they just think it's an easy answer. That's it. So just stop that. Everything will go get better, but it won't. The most frequent cause of hair loss for women is a low thyroid. And low thyroid often happens, well, it can happen at menarche when you start your periods. It can happen right after a baby. Or hypothyroidism can happen when you're going, leading up to the change. When your testosterone starts dropping, your thyroid often uh, cuts out as well. So thyroid replacement is very important to getting your hair back. And getting good thyroid replacement is hard to find. You have to replace both T3 and T4 for women to get hair growth and a normal head of hair. So that's the most common reason your hair is falling out. Another reason I find in people who are dieting, they don't take vitamins to make up for what they're not eating, and they're not eating enough protein. Your hair's protein. If you want nails and hair, you've got to eat protein. If you're on a vegan diet and you eat fruit and vegetables and that's it, you're not going to have good hair or good nails or good connective tissue because that's what they're made out of. They're made out of animal products. So add some eggs or some fish. Those are the things that if you don't want to have red meat, which I think red meat's important, but if you don't want to have red meat, add those two other things. And that should help your hair grow much better. Some people have low growth hormone. Uh, and if your growth hormone is low, everything in your body stops repairing itself as quickly or as well. So if your growth hormone is low because you had a head injury or you had a pituitary damage from something, then that, that has to be attended to and treated before your hair can grow like it used to grow when you were younger. Um, back to thyroid for a minute. If, you're, if your hair is falling out all over your head, not just here and here and not just right there, then it could be low thyroid or it could be a high cortisol. A lot of people have high cortisol in, because they're stressed. If your cortisol is high, then hair all over your head will fall out. Cortisol is a breakdown hormone and testosterone is a, a buildup. So 
testosterone's anabolic, um, the steroids like cortisol are catabolic. They break tissue down and testosterone builds it up. So it's the same way with your, with your um, hair. Your hair's going to be less likely to grow and fall out more if you have a high cortisol. So high cortisol, high thyroid, hair loss all over. If you just have hair loss right in front, then that's generally a loss of estrogen. It's not a loss of testosterone, it's a loss of estrogen. So to get the hair to grow right in the front of your head, many people have to have either um, estrogen throughout their body, so they have to take it systemically, or estrogen that's topical to rub into the hair, uh, into the scalp to make the hair grow. So those are two different ways to take it. For people who can't take estrogen throughout their whole body, they can still apply it to that area that is thinning and help it grow back. It also counters any kind of testosterone you may make yourself from your adrenal gland. So when your doctor tells you it's your testosterone, don't believe it. In general, it is not your testosterone. And the only way to prove it's your testosterone that's causing follicular loss or hair loss would be to have it here, here, and here, and also have a biopsy in those areas that showed that it is testosterone, and dermatologists are supposed to do that. Oftentimes, my patients will go to a dermatologist for hair loss, and they won't do a biopsy. They'll just say, oh, yeah, you're on testosterone, see ya. I mean, they don't even pay much attention to them. Now, this isn't all dermatologists, but it's the ones my patients have told me about that they're frustrated with. So one of the things we do to make your hair grow and to counteract facial hair is spironolactone. It's a very inexpensive diuretic. It works great to combat acne. It combats uh, hair loss on your head and hair growth on your face. So it most people can take it, and you take it once a day and just drink extra water because it's a diuretic. So it is an excellent way to treat either hair loss, thinning hair, or facial hair. So keep that in mind. And a lot of dermatologists use that, and, and that's very helpful. But don't stop your testosterone because somebody just told you, even if it's a doctor, that it's your testosterone. Because 99% of the time, it's not. We find another reason for the hair loss. And it's generally, we can generally find the reason, treat it, and it comes back. Another question that I get from patients is, how long can I do this? How, how It makes me feel great. I feel like I used to feel. I feel like myself. But how long can I take estrogen and testosterone or just testosterone for men? And the answer is you can take it as long as you need it. You can, as, as long as you are needing to be active, have a brain, have a body that works. Uh, so basically, you can take it as long as you need it. And that usually is after you start it, you need it until you no longer are healthy enough to make the decision to take testosterone. But it does help you prevent the diseases of aging. It also helps you be more in the moment and healthier, being able to think and having a, a body that works so you can live on your own and not at your daughter's house or something. <laughs> but it's one of those things that is very helpful for age aging so that you age in a healthful manner, not in a, in a sick way. So we don't want to all have be in nursing homes. And if we don't want that, then we need to keep our bodies and our brains well. And this is one of the ways to do it. So we have patients between um, as young as 32 women who've had hysterectomies. Uh, we also have, we have patients up to 93. And these are people who feel good. They still feel good. They don't sit around and talk about their colonoscopies and their aches and pains. They're out doing things. So that the answer to that is as long as you want to be healthy, you can take testosterone and estradiol. Next question is, is a little harder to answer in terms of blanket treatments. I'll just answer it in terms of my office. Um, do I really need all these supplements? So in our office, we do prescribe medication for thyroid and for other illnesses and weight loss, but we also use supplements. If there's a, an equivalent supplement instead of a drug, 
we often use the supplement because it has fewer side effects and it works as well or better than the drug. So in the instance of somebody who has bad anxiety and their cortisol is high and their hair is falling out, we use something called endodrin. Endodrin is a combination um, of a beef adrenal, so it's, a, it's actual cow adrenal gland, a little tiny bit of it, plus some other nutrients that help you absorb it. And it keeps your adrenal from overstimulating and making too much cortisol. So we give it to people every morning, their cortisol comes down, hair loss goes away, they're no longer as anxious as they were, and they didn't have to take Valium or Xanax. So we prescribe supplements instead of drugs or as a drug. So when we tell you we want you to take a supplement, we give you the reasons you're taking it. And we tell you you need to take it and your dose so that you will be healthier, so that you won't die of a heart attack, so that you won't get old, so that you won't have anxiety and lose your hair. I mean, there are so many reasons we use supplements instead of drugs, but it's cheaper, easier, and it's better for you, and you'll feel healthier. Supplements are just they're just natural substances, either like an animal adrenal or they're vitamins and minerals that you may not get in your daily diet. And many of these things like magnesium. Magnesium is very uh, rare in enough amounts in our daily diet to actually give us enough magnesium to make our muscles relax, to lower our blood pressure. Uh, magnesium is very important for relaxation. So we often suggest magnesium and always to our high blood pressure patients. So that's important. Something like CoQ10. If you take a statin and your doctor hasn't told you to take CoQ10 as well, you need at least 200 milligrams of CoQ10 to make up for what the statin is taking away. You need CoQ10 for your liver to function normally. So you have to take it if you're taking that drug. And there's a lot of other examples of that type of supplement use. That's what we do is try to give you back what either a drug's taken away, your diet has taken away, or we're trying to treat your anxiety or with decreasing your cortisol, looking at your lab and trying to fix your lab with supplements. And we can do that. So it's important that whoever's giving you your supplements, you ask what each of them does and how much to take and how long to take it and why you're taking it. I mean, oftentimes on the endodrine, when the anxiety producing situation is over, my patients don't need it anymore. So it's not an, a forever deal. And some supplements aren't. They're just to treat a particular circumstance. So supplements are important. They do, they are effective. Even if other doctors may not think so, the way we use them, they are effective. We're not just throwing a bunch of supplements at you because we want to sell some supplements. That's not the idea. We're trying to fix something or help you with certain symptoms. So that's one of the other questions. And the last question that we'll deal with today is, what do I do about those facial hairs that just pop up? And I, I either a patient can't take spironolactone or she still has a few hairs that still grow, or she doesn't even like the peach fuzz that's growing on her face. So what can she do to prevent facial hair when you're taking testosterone? So my answer is that the medication spironolactone is actually more effective than a supplement. But if you can't take that, then you can take saw palmetto, which is an herb which is used to block DHT at the, follic at the follicle level so that you don't get acne and facial hair. So saw palmetto is a supplement that we use instead of spironolactone for those who can't take spironolactone. You can have treatments like, um, like laser, and laser will get rid of dark hair. Your hair has to be darker than your skin. So if you have blonde hair, we still don't have a laser that will work on blonde hair. So people with blonde hair or white hair on their face that are bothered by it have the choice of being waxed or dermaplane, which is like a, um, an aesthetic treatment we do in our spa 
that actually helps with taking the hair off, but also taking it way down to the dermis level so you have a, a whole new, uh, new level of skin growing. You have exfoliation. Your skin looks better. Your hair is gone. It's like a two for one. So dermaplane is something you have to keep up on. Waxing is as well. Waxing pulls the hair out at the root, which dermaplane doesn't necessarily do. An epilator that you can get on Amazon.com that you can use on your face. Epilators actually tweeze the hair uh, with a little machine that looks almost like a razor, but it's not. And it's tweezing multiple um, multiple hairs at at one time, and it's inexpensive, and you can do it yourself. It's most uh, most usable when you just have a few hairs growing. And then you see them, you don't want to go out without getting rid of them. And you do that rather than pluck, because plucking means that you've got to put your bifocals on <laughs> and that you have to be able to see the hair, which you may not even see unless you're in your uh, rear view mirror of your car. So it's a little hard to pluck exactly where you need to pluck. So the epilator takes care of that. Uh, please don't shave. Shaving gives you stubble. Stubble is miserable. You don't want to kiss somebody with stubble on your face. I mean, I don't think you do. So um, when you shave, you make your hair coarser. You make it grow faster. So don't shave your face. That's, that's just a blanket. Please don't do that. So um, those are the options for facial hair, body hair removal. And many of them you can have done at a spa. You can do at home. I mean, th these, are, these are things that are um, aesthetic issues, but they're important to women, so they're important to me. And these are your options. So choose among those options, whatever is the best for you, and then go for it so that you don't have to deal with the, any kind of facial hair problem. I'll tell you one thing. People even not on testosterone have facial hair. So your adrenal gland, if you're, you're not taking pure testosterone, your adrenal gland will make... Uh, androstenedione dione and some other uh, adrenal kind of androgens, which will give you facial hair too. So it's not just testosterone that does that. It is adrenal hormones. They don't make you feel good, but they give you facial hair. So we'd rather have testosterone. So for today, that's the answer to the questions that I'm most likely to hear in my office or email or on the phone. So please listen, take notes, remember, that these are the answers to these questions, and now you have you are armed with some uh, some weapons so that you can counter people who don't know what they're talking about, or people who are advising you to do something you don't want to do, and you can still stay on your hormones and live a very full and productive life. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth.